Hello, I hope you are all doing well. This video uh, is going to go over transcripts and just preparation for college and all the details involving that kind of stuff. So um, I'm excited to go over this, but please know that you can schedule a time too to discuss your specific situation for your specific student. This is just a general overview for all the families and things to consider. So I'm gonna fill in these spots as 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. I've made this document, which I will provide to all the families at Lifestem Academy, but if you're watching this and you're not a part of Lifestem Academy, feel free to uh, you know, send me an email or you know, the, the, the email amosstarfo1 at gmail.com will work. So let's quickly go over a general overview. Whether you're in Minnesota or North Dakota, there's a certain number of credits you need to graduate from high school. Um, in Minnesota, you'll see things like 21 and a half credits. And in North Dakota, you'll see a different number. We're in Minnesota right now. So I'm focusing on Minnesota, but please know that the, the number of credits is not very different and, and you can get the extra credits you need for the North Dakota side easily. So our students at Lifestem Academy, the way we, we do things is we give them a chance to flourish in the things they love to do and go at a pace that works for them, right? So a lot of them are homeschooled. A lot of families are homeschooled. And, and the beauty of homeschooling is that you can see how fast or how slow you might need to go over a certain concepts. We have students in seventh grade, for example, that are actually almost done with Algebra 2, but we also have students you know, in seventh grade who are in pre-algebra, and that's okay. Just work at your pace, do, do what you need to do. Now, some of the students who are in pre-algebra might be more advanced in writing, for example, than the student who is in, pre, uh, in, in Algebra 2. So every student is unique. Every student is different, and I, I love that, right? One of my goals in life growing up was, imagine if you could make custom-made education systems. I just love the idea of helping every student, customizing things to that specific student's needs. And that leads me to one quick side note, which is that I am making a career course, which is available to Lifestem Academy families and anybody who wants to help their child figure out some direction in life. And so the reason why that's important is because if I want to become a doctor, my plan for this might be a little different than if I want to become an engineer or if I want to become a pharmacist or whatever it might be, but I need to have some direction because it will help me save time, right? Because that's part of the motto at Lifestem Academy, redeeming the time for the days are evil. So let's quickly go over what this could look like for a seventh grader to 12th grader, uh, uh, the different situations with the different courses and how Lifestem Academy can help you with these courses. So let's use an example from this year, for example, okay? So for English, that's one of the more, uh, that's pretty straightforward. Um, in seventh grade, you know, you get uh, different curriculums have different plans, but if you're using things like Nordgrass, or which is the approach we use, we didn't use Nordgrass for the seventh to eighth graders this year. We are using Nordgrass next year for them from Adam to us, but they did a lot of geography in, in, uh, in, in seventh grade this year. And so for the seventh and eighth graders, you could have a typical English course, okay? This could be any curriculum you wanna use. Let's just call it English seven. Let's call this English eight, okay? But you could also be doing the CLEP preparation of college composition, that's fine. Whatever you wanna do here, what we did this year is we did a heavy emphasis on like literature reading for each of these grade levels. As a matter of fact, we basically did like a literature writing program. And so our students were reading or writing a book at any given time. So you have literature or writing, and you can do that if you want all the way to 12th grade. If you just want to get the credit for English, you could do something like this. However, there are CLEP tests, right? And I actually have the CLEP book here. Um, I just had it a second ago. I want to remember if I moved it back. I was going to say I have the CLEP book, and in the CLEP book, they do tell you the different tests that have to do with English. So here are some of the tests. People can do college comp here. So this is college composition. People can do American literature, okay? You can do all these different CLEP tests to get the college credit. So I'm gonna put a circle here and say, uh, these blue ones are courses that you can take to fulfill your high school requirement and get college credit at the same time. Isn't that cool? So you could do that and probably end up with nine credits that are representative of college credits, okay? So that's something to keep in mind with the English category. Now, let's talk about the difference between credits when we talk about high school credits and college credits. High school credits are counting as one credit for the year for that course. College credits are actually, depending on what course you're taking, it could be like three credits for writing. The three credits you get for a writing course in college would happen over one semester. You get three credits. But if you take that course in high school, we would say that you're taking basically one credit 
for that English class. So we have to be careful when we talk about credits because the college credit description is different from a high school college description. In college, you need 120 credits to graduate. So you need 120 credits to graduate. About 60 of those credits in some of these colleges, you'll notice will be maybe more, more general. So a certain things that everybody has to do uh, to fulfill a certain requirement while you, you focus on your junior and senior year, most times on your major. So 120 credits to graduate college, 21.5 credits to graduate in Minnesota, for example, okay? So the first thing is, again, English, pretty straightforward, just getting kids to read, write papers, and follow a curriculum. It could be IEW, it could be a Nordgrass writing approach, which is where you're doing their integrated history, writing, and Bible, which is a credit you can get as well, okay? So that's number one, is English. We can zoom in on any one of these later, but right now I'm just going to do an overview, and then later we'll take each one and zoom in. Number two is math. Generally speaking, some people do pre-algebra in seventh grade. Okay, that's very common. But please know that it doesn't matter what, uh, like what grade you're in when it comes to math. What matters is that you're moving forward and mastering the things you need to master. And so after pre-algebra, the next course people do sometimes is algebra one. And then people do algebra two or geometry. But I will tell you that there's research out there. People have made comments like, uh, why do we do geometry in between Algebra 1 and Algebra 2? And I know for a fact that there are some teachers and there are some people that are like, I don't know, we just do it because it's always been that way. But I want to encourage teachers out there and I want to encourage families. There's no reason to put geometry in between Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. You can do Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 together. You can just do all your algebra and be done. And then you can do geometry. That is completely fine, okay? Um, now, if you want to know what I really think, I don't believe in summers off from math, so I believe that you can finish the whole American math curriculum, the whole thing, in like two and a half to three years. That's enough time. What we do in six years, I think you could do in two years. And I'm not the only one saying this. There's actually a book that I'm going to recommend to families that, um, by the man who started Elephant Math, and he says the same thing. Teach your kids one year of math in three months. He sees the same problem. We have a problem in our math curriculum in America. There's too much duplication. There's no mastery. So why don't we pause, take a step back, remove the summer break from math specifically, dive in, finish the math you need to do, clap your math courses, start getting college credits, and save and begin to invest in your future. That's what I highly recommend for families. So this is the traditional route. is pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, geometry, and then pre-calc and calculus. This is... And I'm saying this with all gentleness and carefulness. This is too low of a bar. What I would rather see is that children move into Algebra 1, do your pre-algebra and Algebra 1. Now, the foundation needs to be laid before seventh grade. And that's why we're using Math Mammoth in the fall. We're going to be doing a lot of practice in the summer. You're welcome to come. Uh, we're going to practice our math skills, solidify the foundation, so that you can work through pre-algebra and get into Algebra 1 by seventh grade. And then you move into Algebra 2. Right? You move into Algebra 2, Algebra 1, Algebra 2 in 8th grade, and then you move into more of a pre-calc in ninth grade, and so on and so forth. Do you see what we're doing? This is more like, okay, now if you're asking what's the highest bar, I would say just keep, keep moving along, and you can literally be doing Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3. That would be pretty cool. Okay, so that's the math sequence. Pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Geometry, Pre-calc, and Calculus. So each of these, starting with Algebra 1, is a credit. So let's circle, so Algebra 1, you get one credit. Algebra 2, you get one credit. You get, you get one credit in Geometry, you get one credit in Pre-Calc, you get one credit in Calculus. So notice that you can get the credits for like your high school transcript, but you can also get college credit in the ones that I put a check mark next to. So you can get college credit for those, and if you do the college algebra, so you can get college credit, college credit, college credit. You're fulfilling your high school requirement, but you're getting college credit. Isn't that cool? So that means that some of our seventh graders, can, they're getting high school credit, but if they get into algebra two in seventh grade, and do college algebra club, they get math credit in seventh grade. And that's going to be normal by God's grace here. Again, I know not everybody might do that, but we want to make it available to people. The science. Okay, in seventh and eighth grade, we have people doing things like general science. Um, you know, some people do things like earth science. Then some people do physical science here. And then you do biology, chemistry, and physics. Pretty straightforward. You can clap chemistry, biology, and there's a test called um, natural science. 
So basically, you can clap biology, chemistry, and natural science, which would give you college credit. If you want to count how many college credits you're going to get, it would be nice to sit down and look at your family situation specifically, and we can go over this chart and look at the, the credits you can get. But this is what you do for the science. You co that will fulfill your science requirements. Now again, this is a low bar. America does have a low bar for science. In some countries, you're doing these three for three years. For, 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 I mean, you're doing a lot more of these subjects. You're going deeper and you're doing all of them, you're just working hard. In America, we just do one year, one year, one year. Um, in Nigeria, we all had to do a full biology course for 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. Everybody had to. And so I wanna change that. And that's part of why we're called Life STEM Academy. I want kids to graduate high school and college at the same time, generally. That's number one. Number two, I want kids to get enough credits to at least go into college as a junior, as a normal thing. These are things that we're gonna build as we teach our students study skills and as we go through these different subjects. Okay, then we have history. For history, as I said, some people did geography this year. So you have geography, um, and I'm actually going to say either seventh or eighth grade, let's say you're doing geography. And then let's say here you do world history, you do US history, and you do government econ. So that's very normal. You can do geography, which you can get high school credit for. We use the high school textbook this year for the students. We use world history, US history, government economics. You need a half a credit of each. So basically one semester of government, one semester of econ. You can clap the things that I've circled. Now, world history is basically the Western civilizations course. You can clap that as well. So something to keep in mind. Okay, then for electives, uh, slash just other things that you could be doing. You could do gym, right? You could do gym, uh, maybe, uh, of course, you should be doing your exercises regularly, but you could do gym all the way across the board there. Um, we have things like uh, other electives, such as, let's call it, let's say foreign languages. You can do foreign languages, whether it's French or Spanish. Um, you could do that. You could do choir. You could do that as well. You could do things like agricultural science, which we want to start doing more with our students. Agricultural science. You could do things like computer science. You do things like logic. Okay, I'm just filling in the different spots for the electives. This is flexible what you put where. But the idea is we have things going on with our health and nutrition. We have things going on with foreign language. We have things going on with choir. We have things going on with uh, agricultural science and different things. So just make sure that you're doing the different courses. Uh, like fill in what works for you and what would be the best case uh, for your student. So these are some of the ideas. We can make another video on the electives, but for the English, math, and science, and history, we basically have an idea of the path that we want to take. Guys, when it comes to, um, I'm sorry, parents, uh, students and parents, when it comes to fulfilling the requirement to graduate high school in America, I'm really sorry to tell you, but your, the bar is low in America. So what should we do? Don't look at the bar at all to be the standard. Help your child see where they want to go in life. They will meet the bar. They will far exceed the bar. The bigger question is, what, is, what do they want to do with their lives? And how can we spend time learning what to do, like job shadowing and whatever we need to do to help children have a direction and vision, let's do our best to do that. And so I want to encourage families, keep up the good work. Let me know how I can help. I have some other people that are joining my team to do career counseling, college counseling. So let us know. Let's schedule a time. Let's help your child find out where they're headed and give them all the tools they need to, to flourish for the glory of God, ultimately. Thank you for watching this video. Sorry if it has gone too long, but I will do more videos like this later. Take care and have a blessed day.